What's going on guys? Jake Bully with Barbend.com. Today we're going to be talking about an often overlooked and near and dear topic to my heart, and that's tempo. Today we're going to talk about what tempo is, how to read and interpret it in your program with a few different movements so you can really get an understanding of what tempo looks like during different reps and sets. And then also we're going to talk about the benefits of tempo in your training. So now, what is tempo? The easiest way to define tempo is that it's the amount of time it takes you to perform one rep. In general, tempo is useful to keep in mind when it comes to moving consistently. For example, you don't want to be dive bombing movements. Having an idea of how to eccentrically load, pause, and concentrically contract is always a good thing to keep in mind. When it comes to lifting, coaches will program tempo for a variety of reasons. Some of these include improving and increasing your time under tension for a certain exercise, improving your postural positioning in various movements, and strengthening specific portions of movements. When it comes to reading tempo on a program, coaches will generally use three or four four numbers. For the sake of this video, we're going to talk about tempo with four different numbers. In my opinion, it's a little bit more beginner friendly and can help you understand every portion of a movement. So if we look over here to my left, we're going to see a back squat. The tempo for this movement is four, two, one, zero. What do these numbers mean? The first number in tempo always means eccentric. The eccentric is a lowering portion. So for the squat, we're going to have a four second descent down to the hole. Our second number is a two. This means it's the hold or pause at the bottom of the eccentric. So for the squat here, we had a four second descent and now we have a two second pause at the bottom. So the third movement up here on the screen is a one and that's going to entail the concentric portion of the movement or the standing up. Generally one will be plugged in when it's just kind of your just normal contraction speed. The fourth number is a zero, and the zero indicates that there's no hold at the top, so you're just gonna stand up like normal, and then go right into your next rep with a four second descent. In my opinion, I like the fourth number because there are some movements, for beginners especially, that I like to add in a hold at the top. Some of these movements include a chin up and pull up, but again, the fourth number is not a must for reading tempo, but it can be used. So to wrap that up one more time, the first number in a tempo sequence stands for the eccentric tempo. So in our case, that was the four in the squat. The second number means the hold at the bottom of the eccentric, and in our case of the squat, that was the two. The third number indicates the concentric portion, which in our case was the one, and the fourth optional number in our case was the zero, and that stands for the hold at the top of the concentric. Now, what does tempo look like with a variety of movements? Let's go over five and see. So the reason I want to go over a couple different movements with tempo is because not every movement starts the same. For example, in our squat example, we start with the eccentric. That makes reading tempo super clean and easy. For something like a chin up, we're going to start with the concentric. So the only really difference is, is that we're going to do the concentric portion and a hold if there is one at the top, and then we're going to read tempo as normal. So for this chin up example, let's say we have a tempo of two, 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 two. So we have a two second concentric, one, two, a two second hold at the top, a two second eccentric, and then a two second hold at the bottom. So again, if it does start with the concentric, totally fine, don't let that trip you up. Get to the portion where you're gonna be starting the eccentric and then read tempo as normal from there. Now let's talk about the deadlift and what tempo looks like with that movement. So the deadlift will be similar to the chin up in which we are starting the movement with the concentric portion. So again, there are two different ways you can do this. You can either one, pick up from where the tempo is written and perform the concentric and hold at the top with the similar numbers that have been written down, or you can perform just your normal kind of rep and start with the eccentric as follows. So let's say for this deadlift example, we have a tempo of three, one, one, one. So what that means is we have a one second concentric, a one second hold at the top, a three second eccentric, and then a one second hold at the bottom. Now, generally coaches will include a second number for a hold at the bottom just to ensure you have time to reset and to ensure you're not touching going during reps. Now let's look at tempo in a bench press. So now let's look at tempo in the bench press. For this example, we have a tempo of four, two, one, one. So we have a four second eccentric, a two second hold at the bottom, a one second concentric, and then a one second hold at the top. Now let's look at that in action. So we have a four second eccentric, a two second hold at the bottom, a one second concentric, and then a one second hold at the top. Now let's move into our next movement, the dumbbell shoulder press. So for this example, we're going to talk about tempo in the single arm dumbbell shoulder press. 
For this example specifically, I'm gonna give myself a 6-1-1-0 tempo. Here's what that would look like. One, two, three, four, five, six. One second hold at the bottom, one second concentric, and then there's a zero hold at the top, so I'd get right into that next eccentric. Now for our final movement, we're gonna talk about the Bulgarian split squat. The final example we're gonna use with tempo is the Bulgarian split squat. For this example, I'm gonna give myself a tempo of a four, two, two, two. So what is that gonna look like in action? We're gonna take our position. We have a four second eccentric, a two second hold at the bottom, a two second concentric, and then a two second hold at the top. And then we're gonna get right back into that four second eccentric. So now that we've talked about a couple different movements with tempo and how to read tempo and why and what it is, now let's talk about how to use tempo for specific goals and benefits. Three major benefits that can come along with tempo training. Number one, increasing your time under tension. So this can be useful for a couple different reasons. Number one is just from a hypertrophy point of view. By increasing your time under tension, you can focus on both a concentric, a hold, eccentric portion of the movement, and a hold at the bottom. Depending on what movement you're doing, each of these will be a little bit weighted heavier. So if you're just trying to increase the size of your muscle, improving your time under and increasing your time under tension is a useful means to do so. Increasing time under tension can also be good for beginners who are just trying to understand and feel out a movement and stay consistent with their movement patterns. The second benefit that comes along with tempo training is improving lifting postures and holds during certain exercises. So a couple areas where this could be applicable include, let's say you're a power lifter and you're struggling with the hold and the bench press at the very bottom. Tempo training can be a really useful way to hone in on this and improve on that aspect for carryover to competition. For another example, let's just say you're trying to improve on your general strength and you notice in the hold is squat, you're losing some of your stability or you're kind of like having, let's say, a kind of a divot to the left or right or some form of form breakdown is present. By adding in a slower tempo and focusing on, let's say, a hold at the bottom, you can really focus on fixing that issue and kind of highlighting where it might be present so then you could orient some of your training to focus on that weakness down the road. The third benefit of tempo training includes honing in on a very specific portion of the movement. So let's say for the squat, you have a tough time eccentrically loading and kind of packing everything before exerting a ton of force into a stand up and concentric portion of the movement. By focusing on a longer tempo, you can really focus on improving your eccentric loading patterns, but it can also be useful for focusing on the power exertion of movements. So for tempo written with the power aspect, coaches will often use an X or just a zero depending on how they like to write it. Now for this example, let's say we have a jump squat and we have a tempo of a three, one X. So what that would be is a three second eccentric down, a one second hold at the bottom, and that X means stand up as quick as possible and be powerful. So when it comes to tempo training, there are a ton of benefits that come along with this style of training. It really comes down to what your goals and needs are and the context in which it's being used. And that wraps up our video talking about tempo and how to use it and what some of the benefits that come along with this training style are. If you want a longer form article to dive into some of those more nitty gritty details, be sure to check out our tempo article and Google bar bend and tempo.